How's it going, everybody? So, for those of you that have uh, seen the announcement from Cisco, and for pretty much anybody in the Cisco world, um, myself included, I, I didn't. I tweeted about it when I saw the, the post. I retweeted it and stuff like that. But I didn't go on LinkedIn and be like, "Yay!" Uh, no jazz hands from here. So, I, I I'm actually rather excited about this because now this gives me the opportunity to go take the exams that I've for the most part, I had to put on hold because the fact that, well, one, um, I wasn't able to go take the exam because now this, the, the Pearson View Testing Centers that I normally would take, or go to, I should say, had been closed due to the fact that the locations that these t Pearson View Testing Centers are located, the uh, college campuses are closed, so therefore Pearson View is closed. I ran into this one time in the past where uh, bad weather in the area closed the local campus, which closed the Pearson View Testing Center. Pearson View was cool enough to let me reschedule for the next day, and I went ahead and took the exam. I failed, but they were nice enough to let me reschedule without having to charge me another $450. So, thanks, Pearson View, to that. So, let's, let me talk briefly about the recertification process real quick, just because some people might have some questions on that. So there's three ways for you to recertify. So the first one is take a new exam, right? So you take, uh, take a new exam that you've never taken before um, at the level you need to take it at. So for example, if, you're, if you've achieved the CCNA and that's as far as you wanna go, retake the CCNA. If you have achieved a CCNP of any level, whether it's uh, writing and switching, whether it's security, service provider, I don't care what track it is, if you go retake one of the exams that you had already taken, you're gonna to have to take three concentration exams to recertify. That's, a, that's if you have a CCIE. If you are looking just to recertify, you just have to take one exam and it automatically recertifies you. So if you had taken, let's say, data center, you passed the CCMP data center on, let's say, April 1st, right? No, not April Fool's Day. Um, you take that exam, or you took your, your concentration exam on that day and you pass. Congratulations, you're now a CCMP and data center. You then switch gears and you go over to say collaboration, and you pass the collaboration core exam or any of the concentrations. Guess what? You automatically have uh, recertified your CCMP data center and your CCNA or any, any other certifications at the CCMP level you already had earned and below, okay? Keep that in mind. So there's that. There's taking a new test to go and um, to recertify. So you you end up uh, recertifying based off of taking a new test. The other way is doing the continuing education. So you have the continuing education and you earn enough points to recertify your, your certification. The third one is the new one which is the online testing. So before it was, you had to go to Pearson View and I have, there's a Pearson View testing center about 15 minutes from my house. So it's kind of nice. Now they have this online testing. So let's go take a look at how this works. So I clicked here and now they have, uh, if you click right here, this is where I went. And then it redirects you to this page, online testing. So I was like, well, that's kind of cool. I kind of expected Cisco to do this. Um, it was, it's kind of like, well, how else will they do this? Um, is there everybody else is doing it? Um, so VMware, Microsoft, uh, AWS, pretty much every other manufacturer has some sort of online proctoring tool. So that's Cisco's way of doing it. So I clicked on this, it was redirected me to this guy. So you click in here and so there's some prerequisites for this. Actually, let me go to here. So there's some prerequisites real quick that you need to know. This is super important. So um, if you violate any of these, um, the one that I think is gonna be the most one is gonna be the access to a quiet private location. I know a lot of people out there do not have a isolated location to go study at. They have their really nice gamer headphones and they sit in front of their laptop and they do whatever studying they're gonna go do. They're, um, they le have learned to isolate themselves in a open forum. That's not gonna work here. 
So if you're a kitchen table studier or a countertop studier or sit in your chair in the living room studier, that's not going to work here. You have to have a private location. And what they're going for is they don't want to have anybody else in the room and they want to prevent anybody from trying to aid you. Now, I haven't actually done this myself, um, but based off of this, it's telling, I mean, it's pretty obvious. It kind of implies nobody. So I actually went out and just the other day I added, you guys can't see it, in one of those little uh, single eyelet latches on my office door because my office door does not have a lock on it. So I now, if it comes down to taking an exam, I will latch that thing so I can guarantee nobody will be able to come in by accident because every once in a while people make the mistake they don't pay attention to the red light that's on or they're on their phone and they're not paying attention and they enter by they barge in and I'm like hi but um, needless to say that's what you're gonna need to have above everything else go find a room um, you might have to kick the, your brother or sister out of your out of your bedroom for the next couple of hours do something um, for example one of my kids is old enough now to start taking exams, and he's actually working in a CCNA. So, because of that, I am, uh, when it comes time for him to take the CCNA, you know what? I will give up my office. I will leave the office, let him be in here, and he will uh, be allowed to take his CCNA exam whenever he chooses to do so. He's just getting started, so I don't think this is going to happen in the next two weeks. Um, but that's basically the situation. Now, a uh, strong internet connection, that's obvious, a webcam. What, I'm, what I think they're gonna do, and I'll do another video once I've taken, gone through this process, is uh, what my guess is what they'll do is they'll literally take, have you take the webcam and show the room. Like, they'll want you to prove that there's nothing else going on, which I think is good on them. You know, they're trying to maintain a level of integrity. The other thing that, uh, one thing that I do as an instructor is I want to see who I want to see your screen, and so not everybody has. I've got three monitors set up. The one the can't webcams on the middle one. I've got one over there and one over here. So you're looking at a secondary monitor. So I have three because I'm a busy person and I need to have multiple monitors. Um, I can't work off of one. I just I'm so inefficient. Um, but I'm get so like there are ways to mirror what you're seeing and stuff like that. And for you know, the audio would have to be on and stuff like that. So it's just one of those things where there's a lot of things that you would need to, uh, they're trying to mitigate in the, in the process of eliminating you from cheating, which I think is a good thing because I mean, if you're taking a Cisco exam, you should be able to take it without cheating. Simple as that. Um, if you've done your due diligence, you should be okay. Uh, then the OnView software. So you go to Cisco, uh, Pearson View's website and, um, you can do the systems check. So I did the systems check. It requires you to download some software. So let's go test my system. And then you have uh, confirm, this is the, the computer you'll be testing from, which it is. And then you download the software. And then when you download the software, you click this, and it automatically populates this nine digit code. I can't actually run through the entire scenario because of the fact that I'm not scheduled for an exam um, or anything like that, so I really can't go any further with that. But this is what it'll look like. Oh, um, it must have gone away. So let me just go ahead and copy access code, download. So, and then you run the executable. So you can see already, or I've already ran it. And so it pops up on my, it popped up on my other screen a second ago. There it is. Here we are. So we we'll go ahead and bring this guy over. And so there's the, there's the access code is right there. 697, this will be on, a, it's a one-time password basically for like a VPN type of access. And then I will go ahead and I will pause my video and I will enter my phone number. Okay, so now it's gonna say, are you 18 years of age or older? Yes, I am, get started. So I'm gonna have a failure. And the reason why I'm having a failure is because OBS is um, grabbing my a webcam. Uh, and now it's checking my internet speed. So momentarily, my internet speed's good and it does detect a microphone. Um, it's detecting my headset, which is actually incorrect. I have a Yeti, but the Yeti uh, is actually the microphone that I'm using to record with. So that would obviously have to get changed because if I was to grab my 
my headset, the audio is only going to get better. Well, at least, at least it should. It should get better. Anyway, well, that was my intention anyway. That's my thought process. So there's that. So in case anybody hadn't seen this before, this is basically what it's going to look like. So I'm going to go ahead and close this guy out because there's not much more for that. And then that would be, you would go from there. I'll give you more of a, a breakdown as to how that will come into play once I take an exam, but I wanted at least to walk you guys through that process because I've seen a lot of people talk about the, the ability, right? But I've never seen anybody actually walk through, this is what you would need to do. So that's pretty much where it's at. Um, for those of you that are looking at taking the test online, um, let's be, let's maintain a high level of integrity with it. Don't do anything nefarious. Um, my suspicion is Cisco will be even more stringent on the testing. And my suspicion, I, I've, I've seen some live streams of some other instructors talk about this where um, they've, they've had the webcam pulled off and they make you point it at your desktop to make sure that no other windows are open. So they'll make you close windows and only have one window open, which is fair. Uh, and the other one is that you have nothing on your desk. So your desk is completely clean. Mine's got some clutter on it right now because it's, it's a working desktop. Um, so I would make, have to, before I would start my exam, I would move anything that's on my desk that might be considered a distraction or not okay with the proctor to, I would move it somewhere or I would put it away, clean it up before I would start my exam. You know, because I, I don't want to run into a problem where it's like, hmm, I'm not sure if Rob is going to be legit here. I don't ever want to run into that problem. So those are just my the way I'm approaching this. Um, I will be take my goal is to take the CCNA here in the next few days, I guess. I don't know. I have to look at the availability. But um, I also want to take the Encore exam. But um, I probably won't be taking it this week because I've got to still I've got a lot of work I'm trying to get knocked out for some other stuff. But I wanted to walk you through that experience and stuff like that. But um, if you guys have any questions, let me know. But everything that I'm aware of from this uh, experience, I've presented to you. So what I will do is um, I'll walk you through the process once I've completed it and I've gone through a proctored exam and how that experience went. So until next time, guys, thanks so much for stopping by. We'll catch you guys in the next one.